Hi, I'm Sapo, and this is an introduction to Does QA. I'm logged into my account here. I'm on the Flows tab, and we're going to create a new flow to go and check an IMDB profile. So I've created a new flow. I'm going to pull in a starter node, and using our starter node, we're going to go to the IMDB website, and we're going to do that on desktop. Now we're going to check Dwayne Johnson's profile page and the way we're going to get there uh, from the home page is we're going to do a search for Dwayne Johnson. We're going to click the magnifying glass, we're going to go to the first actor and then we'll be on, on this profile here. So let me pull in a set node and we're going to set search to Dwayne Johnson. I'm going to bring in a touch node and we're going to touch the search button and we are going to touch the first person in the search results page okay so let's just wire these up so it's just nice and simple and uh, we're going to be on the profile page but we we need to check that so let's check that the hero title uh, starts with Dwayne Johnson. Now the reason I did a starts with here is because they've got this uh, just at the end of the name. So we're just going to check that it starts with Dwayne Johnson. Uh, from this point we're actually going to do a branching test. So you'll see what that means in a second but it's good practice every time you branch just to give it a name. So we're just going to name this details and we're going to check a few basic bits of information. So IMDB has this star meter and Dwayne Johnson is in the top 500. Um, and we're also going to check his date of birth. So we've got birth date and that equals, and we'll just copy off the page. Uh, so. Before recording this, what I've done is I've gone through and I've created the elements for this introduction uh, just to make it a little bit quicker, but it really is just a case of uh, inspecting the element and finding a data test ID, a ID, a class, or an X path that makes sense and is easy to work with. Um, and then you just name your elements uh, so they're nice and easy to understand what they are, what their purpose is, and if you need to make a change because of development changes that you can easily go back and just update that and um, you even can see uh, how many times it's been used. So if you have elements that you've created over time and then you're not using anymore, it's really easy to delete them. I've just pulled in another touch node here and that is for opening up the filmography. So there's this little see all button. I've created an element for this. When you click it, it's fairly fast, but sometimes it can take a couple of seconds. Uh, if we were checking a specific element inside this, we could just do an assertion on that element using a check node, and it would automatically wait up to 10 seconds for it. But what we're actually gonna do, because this is a simple introduction, is this whole area, we're just gonna make sure that a specific film exists. And so I'm just gonna pull in a wait node just to make sure that all of the lists, uh, all of the films have been populated in that list. Uh, we're just going to wait for three seconds, that'll be plenty. And I'm going to do a check. And rather than doing an equals on this, what we're going to do is a contains. And we're going to check for the absolute classic where Dwayne The Rock Johnson plays Sarge in Doom. So obviously, if this was a proper test, we'd have a lot more details uh, that we'd be checking. Um, but this is just an introduction and so we'll leave that here and we'll test something or interact with something a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to name this branch Photos and we'll wire it up to here. And so what will happen is two tests will be created and they can run in parallel. Uh, one will do these uh, five steps and then go down the details and then one of the tests will do these five steps and then go down the photos route and when we uh, run this test you'll see exactly how that looks 
So I'm going to put a, another touch node in. I've already created the elements, so this should be nice and quick. Um, and so touch in photos, which is right here, goes through to this view, page one, because there's plenty of photos of Dwayne Johnson. Uh, we know that there's going to be exactly 48 thumbnails. So we're just going to go to photos, thumbnails, and we're just going to say equals 48. And so this is actually checking the count of the nodes on that page. And we're going to open up the first one. First thumbnail. And this is going to bring up a light box where we can then flick through all of the images. So let's just check that that displays correctly. And I called that media viewer. There we go. And then let's cycle through a few of the images. Media viewer next. And we'll just do that again. And we'll do that one more time. And then we'll close it. Uh, so that's uh, action bar close. There we go. Okay. So we've got two, two branches here. Let's have a third. So one of the great things that you can do with ease in does QA is you can actually check lighthouse scores. So let's call this lighthouse scores and uh, we'll do an accessibility and an SEO. And then we'll get running the, this test. So we're going to branch off at this point again because we just want to make sure that we are on the correct page so that we know that the accessibility and the SEO scores that come back are actually correct. I think the accessibility score is 80 something. Um, so we're, we're going to do a, a 75 and uh, the SEO I believe is, is 100. So we'll just check that that is actually 100. Okay, I'm just going to tidy these nodes up quick. There we go. Obviously, we can zoom in, zoom out, move all around. We've got plenty of space to work with here. Um, I'm just trying to keep it all in, in the view at the same time. So there, that's our test. So we've got three tests within this flow. And if I hit run up here, then that is creating these tests and it's going to start them. So if I just go through to the test view, you can see that these are the tests that we created. Now, what is happening in the background is each test is having its own little runner server spawn into life. Um, no runners were ever reused, um, and each runner only has the job of running a test. So we have complete unlimited concurrency. If you wanted to limit that, you are able to, um, but every single one of your tests the amount of time it takes to run your entire test pack can be as short as your longest running test. And so these three separate tests are all going to run in parallel right now. So we've got one here, which is uh, going to go down the details flow. We've got one here, which goes down the photos flow. And then we've also got our nice short one, which is just going to check some uh, lighthouse scores for us. Great thing is everything just updates live. You get instant feedback um, as the servers do their job. And you can just sit here and just watch as they, they progress. Okay, so the details one uh, is uh, looks like that that has fully passed. Yep, we've had confirmation of that. The photos one. Okay, um, now one of the fantastic things about this is you do get to see all of the screenshots as it was going through um, on all of your tests. 
and you also get a video at the end of it. So we'll just quickly watch the photos video. And then it will close the media viewer. Brilliant. That's the end of that video. Okay, so some of you are probably thinking this is not a very good test because we've got all this data hard coded in there. And that's the final thing I want to show today. Now we have the concept of the value store over here and I've already set up an actor with this information. And so what we can do with this is we can change the values in here um, and then run our test again and that would work. But anything you put in the value store, you can also change. So you could send a random actor's detail in when you trigger your test run and it will just use the data that you're passing in there. So um, obviously we can't do that just at the moment with uh, the, the fully hard coded. So we just need to go through and instead of using this value, we need to pull in a value from the value store. So I'm just going to say actor. Uh, dot name and then here we also need to do actor dot name so just dollar sign you see actor pops up and then we'll do dot name um, here actor dot meter there we go and I uh, actor.film okay so it's only down this branch and so I can just hit run but if I wanted to um, I can go to the test view now I've made this change and you can see that because because I've updated something here in the common steps then all of them have now been marked as outdated uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate preview tests and we'll just run the details one because it's only really that one that tested all of the value store changes. Um, so yeah, the reason why these get marked as outdated is um, we want to show that the test has changed. And so even though this was a pass, because things have changed since then, they may be passing or failing because of the change, not actually because the site is now broken or has been fixed. And so we just make that a little bit more obvious. Um, the test has changed, you probably need to run it again and make sure that you're getting the results that you were expecting. There we go, it's been picked up. Okay, and this test is about to finish. And you can see that using the values from the value store work just as well, but this gives us great flexibility because this test is no longer a Dwayne Johnson test. This test can be for any actor. We can pass in any values that we wanted. We could pass uh, random values in via a webhook and run this test. So that's all I wanted to show in this quick introduction. Thank you very much and that's all for now.